Hello friends, I'm Varun Vora, a US based known expert in the area of IT risk, IT audit, IT security and IT compliance with extensive industry experience across top fortune 100 companies having authored and appeared in several media and journal publications. Welcome to my channel IT with Varun Vora to master the fundamentals and concepts not available in any book or over the web, most trusted channel and resource to build or advance your career in IT audit, IT security, IT SOCs, IT risk and IT compliance. Friends, as part of our ITGC journey, I already have over 150 videos related to various control areas across application, server and database layers with a new video every week on my channel to help you understand these concepts thoroughly to build or advance your career. In continuation of our operations ITGC category under which we have covered incident and problem management testing across server and database layer and the next steps once you identify a finding in incident and problem management testing. Today we'll learn the mitigating controls related to incident and problem management testing. Before we dive into the details, let us first understand the term mitigating or compensating controls which simply means to have other controls which can mitigate or reduce the risk. Friends, as you hear me say, everything is risk driven. So we have to assess what is the risk due to the deficiencies in incident and problem management testing as that should help in identifying how you can mitigate the risk or what are the mitigating or compensating controls. When you talk about deficiencies in incident and problem management testing, they are broadly in three categories. Either the incidents are not locked timely or they are not resolved timely or the resolution itself is not documented appropriately. So findings in incident and problem management will fall in one or more of these buckets. Now let us put our risk and compliance lens on for incidents not being logged or resolution not appropriately documented are pure documentation issues. So when you talk about these two categories, not being logged or the resolution not appropriately documented, they are primarily related to documentation issues. So we have less to worry about these two finding categories from a risk perspective, but the real risk is around incidents not being resolved timely. That's where the real risk lies. So this is purely coming from when you put your risk and compliance lens on. The reason this is the real risk is because this is negatively or may negatively impact the IT operations, which is why this control area is under the operations ITGC category. So it might be coming a full circle now on why is this control area incident and problem management placed under operations ITGC category. The reason is because all the risk we are talking about here, specifically this incidents not being resolved timely, they all impact the IT operations as a whole. Let's take an example. Incidents like bad job failures, interface issues, hardware issues, network issues, and so on, if they are not resolved timely and continue, the whole resolution piece is delayed and the scenario continues, it will have an, an adverse impact on the IT environment, which will then act as a bottleneck to get the job done. So that's the real risk we are talking about and it's stemming from incidents not being resolved timely. Rest of the both are more in the documentation space. So they have, they carry lesser risk compared to, to this not being, incidents not being resolved timely.